I've got two dive watches here. One that costs 200 pounds and the other one that costs over 6,000 pounds. Let's check them out, see how different they actually are and see whether one really is worth over 25 times the amount of the other one. Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I'm Adrian and every time I talk about Rolex on the channel, someone always comments that you'd have to be stupid to spend that amount of money on a watch. So I kind of want to explore the idea of where are we putting our money and is it stupid to spend £6,450 on a watch compared to 250 So the two watches are a Seiko 5, this is reference SRP D55K1. It retails for £250, or rather its recommended retail price is £250. It's likely you'll get a discount on these things. The other watch is a Rolex Submariner, the new Rolex Submariner that came out in 2020. This is the reference 124060, or more commonly known as the No Date Submariner. This retails for £6,450, but if you know your watches, you know it's highly unlikely that you'd be able to get one at retail price because they're so sought after. These things sell on the grey market for nearer enough double the retail price. Let's start off by talking about the specifications because that's kind of the factual stuff. A lot of this is our own interpretation of value and where we apply worth and value to things because ultimately these two devices operate in a very similar way and they do pretty much the same job. Everything else is just simply what we apply to that. So let's start off with the facts. With the Seiko, we have a 42.5 millimeter wide stainless steel case. The stainless steel used in this watch is 316L stainless steel. The crystal is Hardlex, which is Seiko's own proprietary mineral glass. It doesn't have a screw down crown and it has 100 meters of water resistance. It's powered by a Seiko own movement. This is an automatic movement. So there's a rotor inside that spins around and charges the spring and that spring delivers 41 hours of power reserve. The movement has 24 joules inside and it's accurate from minus 35 seconds to plus 45 seconds a day. The Rolex has a 41 millimeter wide case, also in stainless steel, but these guys use 904L stainless steel, which is ever so slightly softer than the 316 used in the Seiko, but it's more corrosive resistant. The crystal on the Rolex is sapphire crystal, which is so much more scratch resistant than the mineral crystal that you find on the Seiko. This crystal will stay crystal clear for a very, very long time. In, in fact, you're probably more likely to shatter the crystal than you are to scratch it. The movement in this one is a Rolex Calibre 3230. It's also an automatic movement, but this one has 70 hours of power reserve, 31 joules inside, and it's accurate from minus two to plus two seconds a day. Remarkably more accurate than the Seiko. Now you could argue that accuracy is not really all that important because we have other devices to tell the time. And really, if you want a super accurate timekeeping device, just get a quartz watch. But we're talking about value. We're talking about worth. We're talking about money and where that's going. And the movement, the accuracy of a movement, the amount of jewels inside a movement is an easy way of determining whether something is technically, factually better than the other. For example, the Rolex movement, the window of accuracy is the Seiko movement on the other hand, impacts you if you do live by your watch, if you have to get a train, if you have appointments to make and your watch is running at within the window of minus 35 seconds a day, those negative seconds add up and over the course of a month, you could be 17 minutes late for something. At the end of the month with the Rolex, you'd only be one minute late for something. That's quite a big difference. Let's talk about the wearability and the design because at the end of the day, the timekeeping side of these things is kind of secondary. Uh, a lot of guys, myself included, buy watches because of the way they look and the style of them. Both of these watches have very similar aesthetics to them. They've got steel cases, they've got black dive bezels and they've got black dials. So they give off a very similar air. Uh, but then one is, and this is all down to taste, but one, in my eyes, is much more of a refined product than the other one. One feels arguably more purposeful than the other. The Rolex is an iconic design. So many watch companies copy this design, but also the same could be said for the Seiko. The Seiko 5 is based on a previous model of Seiko, which is the SKX, and that is a hugely loved product line within the watch community. I think they're both cool watches. The Rolex is more my style. It's 
it's more normal with the crown being at three o'clock as opposed to the crown being at four o'clock on the Seiko. I like the normal design that comes with the Rolex. The Seiko is a deep watch and annoyingly thick considering that it only has 100 meters of water resistance. Although they're both dive watches and they're both steel dive watches with black hardware, the Rolex feels like it has a more classy, more classic air about it. And I feel like I could wear the Submariner with a suit or at least dress it up. The Seiko 5 on the other hand feels too much like a sports watch and that takes away its versatility. That might be important, that might not be important to you. But to be fair, that's got nothing to do with the value or the cost of these watches. That's simply down to the styling of these two watches. I really dislike the fact that the Seiko doesn't have a screw down crown. From a user's point of view, that might be beneficial because it's quicker to change a time if you're in a position that you need to change your time a lot. If the crown is out and it's on a relatively simple watch, then water could easily get into the movement and destroy the movement. And so I just like that peace of mind of having a screw down crown. Again, that's not a point that comes down to one being 6,000 pounds, one being 250 quid. That's got nothing to do with the cost of these watches. Let's talk about finishing because that is something that does come down to the cost of a watch. It costs a lot to finish a watch. And that is something that is very apparent on these two pieces. They both have brushed areas, they both have polished areas, but the brushing seems to be more exact, more precise on the Rolex. The aesthetics of the watch, they look very, very similar. They have very similar things going on. Does the Rolex look like a 6,000 pound watch? Uh, no, it doesn't look like a £6,000 watch. I've, I've seen elements of this watch done on other pieces that are far cheaper. Does the Seiko look like a £200 watch? Um, no, not necessarily. It, it, it doesn't feel like uh, a massively more expensive watch, but I think you're getting quite a lot of watch for your money, which can't be said for the Rolex. One thing that you are getting a lot of is brand. Seiko is a very recognizable brand. Rolex is probably the most recognizable brand. One thing about the Rolex that you probably could argue that is relatively good value for money is the fact that for £6,000, you're getting the most iconic luxury brands on your wrist. And it costs more for Patek, it costs more for AP. Those brands are arguably more luxurious, they're arguably better watchmakers, but this is the most iconic. Seiko is kind of in that same realm. Seiko is a household name. Everyone recognizes Seiko, everyone knows Seiko. 200 quid for a decent watch that has a recognizable brand on the dial, that seems quite fair. When it comes to branding between the two of these, Rolex really has a power when it comes to value retention. Value retention shouldn't really be something that you aim for when it comes to choosing a watch, but it's a nice way to justify spending money on a watch. With a Seiko, you could spend 250 quid and you could probably sell it for 100 quid. 150 quid. With a Rolex, you could spend 6,450 pounds and sell it for over 10,000 pounds. So that's not value retention, that's just straight up growth. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is the ongoing costs. If you have a Submariner, you're gonna have to insure it and you might have to update the insurance every year because the value is gonna change. If you have a 250 quid watch, it's unlikely you're gonna have to insure it or add anything extra to your home insurance to cover it. These are mechanical watches with tiny cogs rubbing against each other with oils inside that need to be changed and that's gonna cost money. The Rolex, you need to get serviced every 10 years and that service is gonna cost you between 600 to 1,000 pounds a time. The Seiko, on the other hand, you could get this movement serviced. It's unlikely you would get the movement serviced because the cost of the servicing is probably more than buying a new watch. There's another thing around uh, value retention or ongoing um, costs, and that's your enjoyment. A lot of people buy Rolexes because your money is safe with them, especially with a Submariner, or they see them as an investment. But the problem is with that, if you're going out and about, are you going to relax and enjoy your watch? Because it's no longer an investment then, it's a watch. The Seiko, a lot of people have the Seiko 5 in their collection, and they call it their beta watch. The watch that they wear when they're doing active stuff, when they're doing activities where they think they might bash their watch or scratch their watch. And ironically, the stronger, the harder wearing watch that is a Submariner, that's sat at home being all babied and looked after. And so when it comes down to having something that you're going to enjoy and you're going to wear, 
the, the Seiko probably wins on that account. The value of the Submariner is 25 times that of the Seiko, but is it worth 25 times that of the Seiko. There isn't really a conclusion here for me to make. Watch buying is all down to you. There is no right or wrong answer to all of this and people's perception of value and worth, it's all different. Someone might put a value of X on a design whereas someone might think it's absolutely boring and a waste of money. So for all those people who comment, you must be crazy or stupid to, to spend that sort of money on a watch. Yeah, I understand it. I from my eyes and from the way that I see things, I can justify it very happily. But at the same time, I can absolutely see why it's crazy and why it's stupid. And that's why I can absolutely see why people say a Seiko 5 is better than a Submariner. A lot of times it is. It's cheaper. You can buy it straight away. If you want a watch now and you need a watch right now, the Seiko beats the Rolex straight away for accuracy, for longevity. Yeah, the Rolex wins. Those are just my thoughts. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. If you've got a friend who's thinking about buying a watch or is trying to figure out if a watch is worth the money, do share this video with them. If you're into watch straps, I haven't plugged them. I should watch straps. I sell watch straps over at barkandjack.shop. I've actually got a new strap, which is called our Storm Grey. Go check them out at barkandjack.shop. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you like the start of this video, hit the subscribe button down there and the little bell icon to get notifications when I drop a new video. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.